Did you think black holes were silent? Well, they are not. In this video, I will show you the most terrifying sounds that NASA and other space agencies captured from black holes in space. The first time NASA released the so-called chorus of a black hole, people thought it was a prank. Space is supposed to be silent. That's what every science teacher drills into your head. But this thing proved otherwise. What we're hearing comes from pressure waves rippling through gas in a galaxy cluster, and those waves are literally being bent and dragged around by the black hole. That's why they last so long. Stretching over millions of years, if you thought this was weird, wait until you hear the next ones. Not every unsettling sound out there comes straight from a black hole itself. Some of the creepiest ones are from the neighborhoods they live in, galaxies, clusters, and the chaos that happens around them. Think of it like the difference between hearing someone's voice and hearing the echo of everything they stir up around them. Which brings us right back to our own backyard. The center of the Milky Way is home to Sagittarius A star, the same black hole we just talked about. Here's your opportunity to listen to our galactic center. Next up will be some other sounds that we found in the galaxy. They consist of galaxies and clusters that live on the force of the black holes. Centaurus A shows what happens when a black hole cuts loose, blasting a jet of plasma straight across space. But not every black hole shows its power so directly. Sometimes you see it in the scars left behind. That's where the mice galaxies come in. Two spirals locked in a violent dance, dragging out long tails of stars and gas as they collide. Those tails are what gave them their name, thin, stretched streams that look like trails behind mice scurrying away. The chaos isn't random. Deep in each core, supermassive black holes are being shaken awake, stirred by the collision. What we're seeing is a preview of what will one day happen to our own Milky Way when it crashes into Andromeda. The sound data from the mice doesn't come across as a neat tone. It's more like layers piled on top of each other, the signal of galaxies grinding together. If Centaurus A is one black hole showing off, the mice are a pair of galaxies screaming mid-crash while their black holes wait to claim the wreckage. What makes it even stranger is the frequency of these sounds. Naturally, it's so low that human ears could never catch it, so scientists had to crank it up trillions of times just so we could hear a glimpse of what's happening. Which means what we hear is just the audible shadow of a much deeper, much heavier vibration. Imagine that, a sound that's been echoing across space for billions of years, too low for us to detect until we forced it into our range. If you've ever wondered what infinity humming to itself sounds like, this is it. Let's just hear some more. Next up is Stefan's Quintet. I find this one to be just mind-blowing. Stefan's Quintet looks like five galaxies hanging out, but only four are actually colliding. The fifth is just a photobomber in the background. The real group is in chaos, galaxies smashing together, pulling out streams of stars and gas, while at least two hidden black holes flare brighter as they get fed. Astronomers even spotted a shockwave 40,000 light years wide, one of the largest ever recorded. When turned into sound, it's just as chaotic as you'd expect. A layered mess, the noise of galaxies tearing each other apart. The next ones are new from NASA, and I heard them just a few times myself. The Whirlpool Galaxy, MM51, looks almost too perfect. A grand spiral with arms so clear it's often called the poster child for galaxy structure. But those arms aren't just for show, they're rivers of stars and dust, all being pulled by the gravity of the supermassive black hole hidden at the center. That same black hole is also tugging on a smaller companion galaxy nearby, twisting the whirlpool into shape as if to remind us who's in charge. And then there's NGC1300 another barred spiral that makes the whirlpool look tame. Its arms curl out like claws, and right in the middle of that bar lies a central black hole so massive it organizes the entire galaxy around it. When turned into sound, both galaxies reveal the same unsettling truth. The beauty of spirals is built on the pull of something that only consumes. Make sure you watch this video all the way to the end to hear the most surprising sounds.
They were listening to nothing when the detector on Earth flickered. Two invisible worlds, black holes, spiraling closer and closer, each orbit a whisper in space-time until the last moment. On September 14, 2015, those whispers merged into a single crash, a gravitational wave so tiny by the time it reached us that it distorted space by less than the width of an atom. But when scientists transformed that distortion into sound, they found a chirp, rising pitch, rising tension, then silence. The sound lasted less than a second, but it carried more energy than all the stars in the observer universe combined. Think of two giants dancing until they collapse together, then the echo is what we hear. That chirp is a moment when everything violent, everything invisible becomes something you can almost feel. It was the first time humans heard space-time itself singing. Here's it. Phantom Galaxy M74 is the one you just heard. It looks delicate from afar, it's a perfect spiral, almost too clean, like a textbook drawing of what a galaxy should be. But at its heart, like nearly every large galaxy, there's a supermassive black hole shaping the dance. It's a reminder that even the prettiest structures in the universe are built around something that destroys everything it touches. And if one black hole can sculpt an entire galaxy, imagine what thousands sound like together. That's what we get in the Chandra Deep Field South and the Hubble Ultra Deep Field. Listen closely. Pulsars are what's left when a massive star explodes and collapses in on itself, but not enough to become a black hole. Instead, you get something the size of a city with more mass than our sun, spinning so fast it shoots out beams of radiation like cosmic lighthouses. Every time one of those beams sweeps past Earth, we pick it up as a pulse, which is how they got their name. Some are steady, like the ticking of a perfect clock. Others, like the Vela Pulsar, sound like a distorted engine revving in the distance. Then there's PSRB 1937 plus 21, spinning more than 600 times a second. It clicks so fast it feels less like a heartbeat and more like the countdown of some machine we weren't supposed to switch on. And the really strange part? They're reliable. Some pulsars keep such perfect time that they make better clocks than the atomic ones we build here on Earth. Listening to them is both creepy and calming, like hearing the universe's metronome keeping track of billions of years. By the way, here's a story that sounds like it was pulled from science fiction, but isn't. In 1967, a young astrophysicist named Jocelyn Bell picked up a strange, steady radio signal unlike anything seen before. It was so precise that at first she and her team half-jokingly called it LGM-1. Little Green Men. They seriously thought it could be evidence of alien life. What she had actually found was the very first pulsar, a dead star spinning and beaming radiation with the accuracy of a cosmic lighthouse. That discovery didn't just rewrite astronomy, it wanted to open the door to an entire hidden world of strange sounds from collapsed stars and black holes. The universe wasn't silent after all, it was humming, ticking, and whispering, and we'd finally learned how to listen. Tell me what you think in the comments below.